Okay, let's see if I can do this um, without the computer having a brain fart. This I was supposed to finish it at 6, but I said there was going to be another increment in the 6th video to show why the scholars are so stupid to use lunar years. And that's why they're getting the whole Daniel 9 accounting wrong, whether they're, you know, in favor of pre-trib rapture or not. So let's go back to Genesis 12. On the left-hand side of the screen, I'm using Bible Works 5, but I've got Bible Works 8 and 9. I haven't set up 9 yet. And the left-hand side of the screen highlighted in blue is your proof that God uses only solar years. That proof is all over the Bible, but this place is really easy to see it. And on the right-hand side of the screen is something about 70 years. I just did a Bible search on 70 years, so a lot of, you know, unrelated Bible passages are there. But we're going to look at some of them. Okay, left hand side screen in blue. Okay. This month shall be the beginning of months for you. It is to be the first month of the year. In other words, the month that they're in when they leave Egypt is the first month of the year. Speak to the congregation of Israel saying on the 10th of this month. They take a lamb and they set it aside. <gasps> now, think about this. It shouldn't be too hard. If you're going to have on the 10th of the same month that was the original month that they left Egypt, if they're going to align, the only way that can happen is if you're using a solar year. Now, I mean... Do you remember Genesis 5 and the begats? When Adam was 130 years old? Okay, well, how did Adam get to his 130th year after he fell? It wasn't when he was age 130. It was 130 years after he fell. Everybody else was when they were their real age. But how do you get from one birthday to the next birthday on a lunar year? Or a solar lunar year. You can't. Okay? I am age 59. I will soon be 60. I measure that by my birthday. And the only way I will hit my next birthday is if I'm measuring a solar year from my last birthday. Got that? So when it says here on the 10th of this month you can't get to the 10th of the month of the next year. The anniversary. Unless you're using a solar year. Got that? I'm going to let you think about that while I go get a cup of coffee. I'll be right back. Hopefully, you've had time to look at both sides of the screen. So now you've seen what? You shall keep this lamb until the 14th day of the same month. <gasps> That's Passover. Then the whole assembly kills it at what? Twilight, sundown. Twilight is really, um, when they applied it in the law, it was 3 p.m. That was when the sun started its declension. Is really important. It's very technical. When the sun starts its declension. Because it takes time to like skin the animal and roast it. 
You can't be eating until after twilight, but it still takes a couple of hours. Okay, to kill, dress, the whole bit. So Christ died on the 14th at twilight. We all know that the lamb is Christ. Okay, hello. Even the Jews know it's Messiah. They just dispute who Messiah is. Okay, hello here, right here. He can't die on the proper Passover if the calendar is not kept on a solar basis. He can't be first fruits of Passover, which is piggybacked on the last day of the end of Passover, Numbers 26. See my videos to Sar Shalomim, which I just did last week. Sorry, I'm doing so many videos at a time. Okay, it can't hit the right day for first fruits, and Bible calls Christ first fruits and calls church first fruits. It can't hit first fruits right unless in the year he dies, the calendar wasn't properly kept. If the year in which he dies, they did not intercalate, but used solar years, then he can, in fact, be only three days and three nights in the grave because they're starting the calendar four days too early. See, it's a total of five days, but the night is piggy, the new day is piggybacked on the old, so it ends up being four days too fast. Then, four plus three is seven. So he died on Good Wednesday because he rose after the end of the piggyback Sabbath that was on the last Passover, which when you read the Bible in, in Matthew 12, 40 through 41, and it's related verses, he rose on the first day of the week, and if he's three days and three nights in the grave, you're talking Wednesday, Good Wednesday, not Good Friday. I covered that in my, what was it, six RCC video of the bloopers about Good Friday. Not sure which one of that. It's in the RCC series. RCC playlist. Okay? But the Jews are having a brain fart also because you can't get to the anniversary of the 14th day of the month on a solar calendar or on a solar lunar calendar. You can only get there on a solar calendar. You with me? Okay. Let's see if God will let me do this. So now, we're going to use a new window. Let's hope that it works. Yeah, it works. Yeah. It all depends on when I turn the video recorder on. Now we go to Daniel. Ooh, ooh. Daniel, Daniel, Daniel. Nine. And again, this is an old version of Bible Works. I just happen to like using it because I'm more used to it. But Bible Works is now in version nine, which has the actual photographs of the, the manuscripts so you can see how hard it is to read them. Labarum just finished doing a video on 1 John 3 1 showing that it was a scribal error, a copying error that was made in the later manuscripts of the King James you know, uh, text Greek text is wrong so the King James only people are completely shot down Okay, well, how do you want to see what that text looks like yourself so you can see how the error got made? Buy Bible Works version 9 because they have actual copies, photocopies you can search of the actual manuscripts that usually only scholars can see, but now anybody can see if you buy it. It's only $350. Ask God for the money. He'll give it to you. People crack me up when they say, well, I don't have the money for the software. Did you ask God? How do you think I got it? Stop. Honestly, we have no faith in Christ at all. He says, ask anything in my name and I'll do it. Did you ask him? Ask him for the money, okay? Don't give me the excuse you can't study Greek and Hebrew and you can't afford it. Sorry. Daniel 9. See where it says, 
70 years highlighted on the left in red and yellow. Jeremiah the prophet. Well, what, what 70 years does he have in mind? Well, let's look. Okay, this is the new New American Standard, which isn't that good at the at the the cross references. So we're gonna switch over. And this is gonna be ironic. We're gonna switch over to King James. Okay, because it's got better cross references. And look here in the bottom. See in the bot in the middle sort of where it's see where I'm highlighting it now. This is all wrong. It is BC 538. That's the right year. But this Anno, you know, Mundi is wrong. Okay, they're getting that from so, lunar years, and getting it from the Jews, which can't, they don't, they can't, don't count their time right anymore. Okay, so it's showing all the other Daniel verses in there. Okay, because I'm not looking at Daniel 9:2 yet. Okay, this is Daniel 9:2 with the 70 years in it. See. Okay, so what Bible verses talk about the 70 years in Jeremiah? Well, let's take a look. Look on the left, lower left-hand corner. There's Jeremiah 25. That's one of them. See, this is why I like the older version of Bible Works. It's easier to use. In Bible Works 8, this is a lot harder procedure. I can't get this facility as easily. They still have it, but it's not as it's not as quick. Okay, Jeremiah 25 is one of the verses with the 70 years. And here's Jeremiah 27, 7, which is still in context. Okay, and then here's another verse with the 70 years, Jeremiah 29, when the 70 years are completed. Okay, and then there are other verses. But see, the point here is that at the time Daniel is writing this, he had been 70 years in Jerusalem I mean in in Babylon that's why he's writing you can't know that from the English you have to know the meter of the Hebrew because he operates the meter on two time tracks and in Zechariah 7 wait a minute I'll show you that because that's relevant let's go back No, NIV has the same cross reference as the King James. Zechariah 7. See? I already did a video on that. See, 70 years? They're counting from the time of the first deportation. So is Daniel. He's counting on two time tracks. The first one is at the time of the first deportation to the time he prays. From the first deportation to the time he prays in 538, it's really at the end of 538, it's 70 years. So we're, we're kind of screwed up about the whole Nebuchadnezzar thing. Okay, but that's due to our stupid three-year difference that we keep on having. Okay. And that 70 years in Zechariah 7, 5 that you're seeing highlighted in blue, and also in the Daniel 9, 2 passage above it, is the time track that's measuring from Daniel's own capture. He's also measuring 70 years from the time the temple goes down based on Isaiah's meter that also accounts for the 70 years using that time track. He's reconciling the time track of the 70 years in Isaiah to his own capture. He's timing his prayer based on those two time tracks. And in the video description, I'll, I'll put a link to the Daniel, the Daniel write-up because I show the meter and I show the two time tracks in it. It's very long. It's like 20 pages because Daniel's prayer is metered and he's going through Israel's history from 1st David to forward to 238 BC when Rome will complete the you know the iron toes in Daniel 9 2 he's using the man of time and he's mingling it so he's going in the past and then he's going prophetic Mary picks up her Magnificat 73 years after Daniel drops his timeline off so you can see yes on the one hand this whole rapture doctrine that's in Daniel 9 is very sophisticated but at the same time, I'm a brain out. I am not a scholar. I just happened, God just gave me some kind of math gift. 
it you know sometimes works and sometimes doesn't right now it works because I asked him See, ask anything in my name and I'll do it. Ask him for the money to buy this software. Ask him about what I'm saying or anybody else is saying. And he'll give you the answer. Because my pastor was wrong on this. He was wrong. He measured time just like the theologians do as the lunar years. And so, when I went back to uh, try to understand what he was saying, and I'm looking at this very famous passage, Okay, and I'm looking at this. This was in the year 2004. This whole section right here. And I went to God and I said, you know, Dad, I can't balance. The numbers don't balance. Now, I do actuarial stuff for a living, so I live on numbers. And I looked at this passage you see highlighted in blue and at left. After having seen the 70 years that Daniel was talking about, and my pastor spent a lot of time going through the history back up to this. I had looked at this and I knew that it was part of the accounting, especially since it's repeated here, down here. Why am I yelling? Okay. When you look at the timeline and you look at all the Bible's dates, okay, what all the scholars are telling you on either side of the ledger about this timeline. They're wrong, including my own pastor. And I was very distressed about that. As you can imagine, you would be too. I'm sure if you believe in preterism, you don't like what I'm saying in this video. Okay? I have no particular interest in the rapture. I don't need it. But if it's the Bible, it's the Bible. Too bad. I don't like the doctrine that, about kingship either. But it's the Bible. I can't do anything about it. God says it. That's a fact. Like it or lump it. Okay. So I went to God about this. I said, Dad, you know, I can't balance. I can't balance the numbers. It looks like you're using the 70 years because that's the context that Daniel started out with in Daniel 9-2. So how does the 70 years fit with the 490 years? And given the timing of everything, you know, we all know the temple went down 586. Okay, Daniel is measuring from his own captivity here, just like Zechariah 7, 5. Okay, well, 608 or 607 B.C., end of 607, to 30 A.D. is not 490 years. It's also not 560 years, which is 70 plus 490. I played with that for a while. And then when all these scholars on both sides of the rapture ledger are trying to tell me that this, whoops, whoa, how did that happen? Okay, that this gets measured right here from the fair, the the prince, the Persian king over Jeremiah, not Jeremiah, Nehemiah. It's not working. The math doesn't work. And it looks like God is amortizing time here. Because that's what I do for a living. In, in, my, in a, my actuarial job, you amortize a debt that's owed to employees for a future pension benefit. You amortize the past debt. And then the employer is basically putting in deposits in order to fulfill the, the total funding by the time people retire. So that's what I do for a living. I've been doing it for 30 years. I'm looking at this. I'm thinking, you're amortizing time, God. How come? How do these numbers work? How do I make them work? Okay? Now, again, even if you didn't know all that, this is telling you straight up, hello, this is future time, and it hadn't happened yet, and it belongs to the Jews. No brainer. Okay? But it's not as easy to figure out that this is measured on two time tracks. First of all, going back to Daniel's capture. And second, measured from the downfall of the temple. Now, how do you know that? Well, it's a longer story that I'm going to tell you, but I'll try to keep it short. It won't make total sense the way I'm going to tell you. This is a 70-year promise. We saw that in Jeremiah 25 and 29. 
okay? When the 70 years is up, the temple's gonna be completed. Okay, but there's two time tracks. This is 70 years up already when Daniel prays. So it must be talking about the other 70 years, which is measured from 586 BC when the temple went down to its rebuilding in Ezra 6, 5, or 615, which is 516 BC. And that's in the time zone of Zerubbabel and Haggai too, and of course Zechariah. It was re it was completed on the third of eight hour of five sixteen BC. And then Jeremiah comes in and he rebuilds only the walls, and that's in Nehemiah six fifteen, I think it's six fifteen. In fifty two days after he got there, in 444 BC, about the 24th of Elo, okay, which is the, the fifth month, the sixth month of the sacred calendar on Judaism time, which was the same as Persian time back then. Okay, so you got a 70 year parallel. So now, well, what happens? Well, look at this. There's a debt of 70 years, a bad time of 70 years on two time tracks. First, the time track is Daniel timing when to pray. All right, and that can't be referring to Zechariah 7 5 because Zechariah was not there yet, they hadn't returned to the land yet. Zechariah is after they returned to the land. Daniel's dead at that point, he ain't dead here. He's writing here. So he's referring to the first 70 years. Oh, well, wait a minute. Then you got two 70 year tracks that are going to be made up. So when you get down here and God's talking about this 490 years, a new 490 years, well, then the timeline doesn't start until the previous. 140 years have played. 70 and 70. Okay, well then that works because if you measure, let's see if I can do this without it. Oh golly, it won't let me use my calculator. There it is. Okay, it was just slow. I shouldn't be tied to the internet when I'm doing this. Here's 586 BC minus 140 years. That's 446. Now look at this. Okay, I'm probably going to lose the calculator. Remember that 446 BC, not 444, 446. 444 is the scholar mistake. Okay? From the decree to restore and build Jerusalem. The reason the scholars make the mistake is that Nehemiah was under that Persian guy in 444. And the math is close, so they think, well, okay, because 444 to 30 AD ends up being, if you were counting properly and they're not, ends up being 483 years, solar years, solar. Okay, but the problem with that is that it ends up being 37 AD. Okay, let's see if I can get the calculator back. 586 minus 140 is 446 instead of 444. But it's, you know, close enough that that's where these scholars are getting it. Okay, so now we have to subtract 483. And that's 37 AD, honey. Not 30 AD, 37. And the scholars who do this math and see how simple it is, they go, oh, wait a minute, that's overshooting the field. Well, then he's not counting solar years. So they take 490 minus 7 to get the 483 years. And then they multiply it by 360 to get that. And then they divide by 365.25, and sometimes they just round off. 
and you get 476 years and that doesn't quite work but 476 minus and they use 444 get you to about 32, 33 AD and they just stop there. The fact that all their numbers are sort of off still doesn't they don't clue in. It's not 30 AD. He dies seven years before he's supposed to. And that was when I went through this math that I just showed you, I thought, hey, wait a minute, they're all off. They're always going back and forth and they're missing the seven years. How come there's seven extra years here? There's seven extra years in that blue sentence. And they're missing the fact that the one doing issuing the decree is God, not a human king. See, who's talking? Gabriel. What decree is that? God's. Why do we know that it's God's decree? Because that's how Daniel started the passage. See? To Jeremiah. The decree is in Jeremiah. Seventy years. And then it will be rebuilt. That's Jeremiah 29. Ten. Jeremiah 29, 10. So that decree that's talked about here in Daniel 29, 24, 70 weeks have been decreed by who? God. So the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem is where? Jeremiah 29, 10, which Daniel was reading. It's not a human king's decree. It's God's decree. Okay, but the decree was issued when? When the temple went down. And that was when? 586. So as you can see, the accounting starts 586, not 446. But if you subtract 140, which accounts for the 270s, now you're at 446. So now if you subtract 483 solar years, you get 37 AD. Wow. If people did their math right about David's death, they'd realize that 37 AD was the thousandth anniversary of David's death. But they don't do their math right. First of all, they're using lunar years, and so they're playing the games I just showed you a few minutes ago. The second thing they don't get right, because they don't look at the Bible, they specifically don't look at, let's, oh, I hope it might. I'm going to be able to do this without the video crashing. They don't look at, they don't properly read this verse. 1 Kings 6 1. 480 year after they came out of Egypt. Ooh, that's the Exodus. In the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel, in the month of Ziv. Okay, that David was 77 then, not 70. He lived seven years after he died, and that's when 1 Chronicles 25, 22 through 29 gets done. Jeremiah wrote that too. So Daniel is familiar. Daniel is familiar with the timeline that when he sees this, he knows it's the thousandth anniversary of David's death. Christ has to die by the thousandth anniversary of David's death, at which point he would have been 40 years old, not 33. And even in Sanhe the Talmud, Sanhedrin 97a through 99a, they knew that the Messiah was supposed to rule for 40 years, supposed to live for 40 years, because he's born a king, which means he had to be born in the thousandth anniversary of David's consolidated kingship in order to be king of all Israel. You see, God's timing this. But Christ dies seven years early which you would know if you properly did your math here knowing that the context and the decree is God's going all the way back see Bible context 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 Jeremiah 
the one doing the decree, just as he told Jeremiah, is God right here. So the issuing of the decree to restore is in Jeremiah 29, which Daniel had just been reading. So your accounting basis goes back to 586 when the temple went down. Not 444, which the scholars really just back into because they're looking at 30 AD and working backwards. And then they use lunar years to get rid of the imbalance that results when they do it that way. See. Now, seven years is a really pretty important number in the Bible, as you see on the right-hand side. Canaan lived 70 years. Terah lived 70 years. Okay. Abraham was 75 years. This is the book that Jeremiah wrote on Chronicles. Okay. And... Job lived for 140 years, doubling of 70. I hope you notice the parallel. Moses, who wrote about the 70 years, he wrote Psalm 90 in 70-year paragraphs, 70-syllable, 70 70-year 70 paragraphs. Then he makes it explicit in Psalm 90:10. Just, you know, it's kind of overkill, but he's doing it on purpose. And there's Isaiah 23, about 70 years. See, seven years is a kind of prominent number. Okay? And there's the prophecy I was talking about. And here it is again. And here it is again. This is what Daniel is reading. As it says right here in Daniel. And then Zechariah's post Daniel, referring to the same time period as Daniel's looking at, because Daniel's 70 years in captivity when he reads, when he when he writes Daniel 9-2. That's why he's looking at it. Because he's looking at this prophecy and he was counting his own 70 years because that's what it dates from. But it's also dating from Jeremiah 29.10 when the 70 years have been completed for Babylon. For Babylon. Okay, but Babylon lasted more than 70 years. Nebuchadnezzar comes to power when his dad dies. The first thing he does is take over Jerusalem. First deportation. He was not quite king when he was sort of visiting Jerusalem. His dad dies, and this is, you know, he finishes the job that he started. And that's Daniel 9 2. And that's the same time period as measured back from Daniel's. The first deportation, Daniel being the part of it. Okay? And it's the same period, see? Same context. Seventy years had passed. All right? They are back in the land. And now we're looking at that 70. And then, of course, God's chiding them because they're all proud of themselves for fasting. And he's saying, you didn't do that fasting for me. No, they didn't. They were commemorating the temple. The temple is down. You mourn the temple. You wear sackcloth when there is no temple. Do I need to show you Revelation 11 again? So, as you can see, this is calendar year solar. Can't be anything else. Israel's been doing her time wrong all that time. Which is how the Lamb of God could be executed on true Passover and yet eat the Passover four days prior because the calendar wasn't kept properly. It was kept based on lunar year, which everybody's been doing wrong ever since. But God wasn't doing it that way. Seventy solar years measured from first deportation. Seventy solar years measured from temple down. Daniel reads that. He knows what it means. So his, his Hebrew is metered. And that's a long story. It'll be in the side bar, uh, video description. I did a whole playlist on this from Psalm 90 to show where you can prove it. Okay. Zechariah again, counting from the first deportation. And counting from the seven, second. I mean, you know, from the temple down. Actually, it's sort of a hybrid here. Okay? 
So there are two seven-year time tracks. And that's exactly how Daniel's measured using this 70. Okay, and then when you do the math, you find out a really cool thing besides the fact that he's metering to Isaiah 53, which is also metered. And God's reply here is also metered using the 490 time track. Okay. You find out a really nifty thing. And I'll close it with that. All right. There's seven weeks. That's 49 years. And 62 weeks. Well, 62 weeks is the sum of. 364, which is the number of years the temple was, stand, was standing from 950 B.C. when it was dedicated in 1 Kings 8, 1, until it goes down to 586 B.C. It has 126 years left on its own 490. See, it's getting a new one right here. It has 126 years left over. Well, then God is, is factoring that in and balancing to that, too. 126 minus 49 is 126 plus 7. 126 plus 7. Whoa, I mean, I'm sorry, 126. 49 and 70 is what I meant to say. 70. 364 plus 70 is 62 weeks, 434 years. Oh, 434 years. Yeah, 70 and 49 is 126. So he's making up the 70 here. You see that? He's balancing within the numbers to the time that gets reimbursed because the temple was rebuilt and you have two 70s to get there fronting before this can even start. That's new time. First the old time is reimbursed. And it's 140 years from 586 BC to when this starts and that's why the scholars miss it. They miss it because they're using lunar years so they don't recognize that this is running seven years too long relative to what they're expecting. And they miss it because that happens to time to Nehemiah. But Nehemiah is just showing that hi, God's promise was met that the Jerusalem was already rebuilt. He's just going there to fix the walls temple had already been rebuilt in 516 BC. Everybody knows that. So you see, when you want to say that the Jews are wrong, your own math is going to be wrong. Your reading of Bible is going to be wrong. And by the same token, if you are too lazy to do your numbers, then you don't miss what then you miss what God's saying here. And you don't notice that there is a week overshooting the field here. So then you have, and this is what happened to me basically. When I went and did this math, I'm like, well, wait a minute, this is 37 AD. And you know, people make up all kinds of games and they say, well, you see, it's really the BC AD thing, blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. It doesn't make sense in absolute time. How come, Dad? Well, I had to go all the way back to Genesis to find out the Bible's timeline to know what this is. And that's what I've been doing since 2004. I mean, actually I started on this journey in, two, in the year 2000, but I didn't get to this numbers part of it, to the number imbalance, until 2004. And that's why I make so many boring videos about how God orchestrates time, because this is not known in Christendom. A garbled version of it is still known in Judaism, and we Christians aren't paying attention to it. And we're not paying attention to it because we're anti-Semitic. And if you're preterist, you're anti-Semitic. I know you probably don't mean to be, but you are. Peace out.